guys and welcome back to my channel Adisa Talks. So today we're actually going to be talking about chapter 6 and this chapter actually talks about mechanical transducers, cantilevers, acoustic wave sensors as well as thermal sensors. So, let's get started! Now, I'm sure you guys know a little bit about cantilever based sensors. And you should kind of know that these mechanical sensors that I'm going to talk about kind of form a class of sensors which are very sensitive to changes in mechanical properties. And using technology such as micro-machining, these sensors have been playing an important role in molecular detection. Now, some of these sensors are using particular strategies in order to detect these molecules. And it's either by detecting the stresses induced on the cantilever surface or by detecting the change in resonant frequency. Now, an important characteristic of these sensors are the piezoelectric and the piezoresistivity phenomenon that is used in transduction schemes, which allows for a very sensitive response to deflection or the mass changes. Now, the detection of the molecules using these microstructures is quite important. And in their miniaturized size, they have a very rapid response, high sensitivity, as well as a very really label-free capability, and can be also be integrated into lab on a chip for different molecular sensing capabilities. Now, the good thing about these cantilever-based sensors is that they can even detect DNA hybridization. And if you guys are not familiar about this process, please check out chapter one of my book to kind of learn more. And how this happens is that the surface coating kind of responds to a very narrow range of molecules, which results in high selectivity of the sensor. And these sensors have actually been used to detect early stage cancers, as well as the presence of different viruses. But the cool thing about this field is that the field of like cantilever-based molecular sensors follow the development of other technologies, such as the invention of the atomic force microscopy and also microfabrication. Cantilever-based sensors have mechanical characteristics, and these mechanical characteristics include force, strain, moment, ratios, curvature, um, you name it. And these are actually used to kind of discuss the structure of the cantilever and analyze the changes of these characteristics to determine the molecules on the surface of the sensor. The majority of these cantilevers are actually made by silicone. Um, which includes polysilicone, silicon nitride, silicon oxide, and some of the techniques that are used to basically microfabricate silicone are film deposition, photolithography, and etching, and as well as doping. Now, the most advantage to using these polymer calilivers is that the lower the young module is kind of allows the fabrication of the cantilevers with high degree of sensitivity. Pretty cool, right? And the raw materials and fabrication techniques kind of make the manufacturing as well as the fabrication to be very cheap compared to traditional silicone cantilever. But the main drawback is the stability as well as maybe the material that could be used to make this device. And this is due to the small spacing between the substrate and the cantilever because there is a risk of adhesion of the cantilever to the substrate. But that's not all. Another drawback is basically moisture absorption in liquids which could also be examined or seen when using these kind of sensors. In addition to that, there could be fatigue, aging, or bleaching, which can also affect the long-term stability of the cantilever. But the two main principles of sensing with cantilever are static measurements as well as dynamic measurements. Now, static measurement is basically for 
a sensor system where the analyte binding kind of induces surface stress and the flexible cantilever functionalized on one side is actually used to transduce that stress into a measurable deflection but with dynamic measurement most dynamic sensing method are basically based on measuring resonance frequency and when a cantilever is initiated or is initially actuated it will oscillate at a specific frequency and when the analyte molecules are observed on the cantilever the additional mass induces a change in the resonant frequency which can then be transduced into basically measurements so enough about these cantilever based sensors let's jump right into acoustic molecular sensors now currently acoustic wave sensors are actually capable of measuring properties in solid gases liquids you name it and it is basically done by you know measuring density viscosity conductivity concentration etc based on the different sensor designs but there are different types of acoustic sensors and this includes thickness shear mode sensors surface acoustic wave sensors luxural plate wave sensors acoustic plate mode sensors as well as a quad tuning fork but thickness shear mode sensors are actually composed of a piezoelectric substrate that is placed in between two electrodes and it utilizes shear waves that propagate throughout the bulk in the direction perpendicular to the plates. Now from there, the different operating frequency ranges can be measured as well as the different wavelengths can also be determined. Now with surface acoustic wave sensors, these sensors actually utilize modulation of surface acoustic waves to kind of sense the different physical changes or phenomena that's happening on the surface of the sensor. They use kind of like an integrated, jittated transducers to kind of generate the Riley waves that travel along the surface. Now, these sensors are actually built by using photolithographic techniques. They're very inexpensive and have a high level of quality. So that is pretty cool. And they have also been used in different applications. And this include filters, resonators, pressure as well as temperature sensors, oscillators, mass detectors, and so forth. Now the good thing about fluctual plate wave sensors is that they're composed of plates or a membrane which is actually much thinner than the acoustic wavelength and they actually also use interdigitized transducers which is pretty cool now these sensors have several applications and they've actually been used for molecular sensing they have been used for molecular sensing by utilizing antibodies on the surface of the sensor. Now, another type of sensor is the acoustic plate mode sensors. And these sensors are kind of similar in form to surface acoustic wave sensors, but they feature thin plates that are only a few acoustic wavelengths thick. So their operating frequencies are actually higher than most sensors, but their wavelengths are actually quite Lower. Now, the advantage to using these sensors is that they have a really scalable fabrication method. It can also be used in both liquid as well as gases, and it can also be configured to isolate interdigitized transducers from an analyte liquid, which is awesome. But some of the disadvantage is that it has a low mass sensitivity and has a large dimension. So this is something we all need to think about in terms of implants or any other types of design. Now, last but not least, a quad tuning fork sensor is actually a type of resonator that uses a physoelectric effect. 
Now it kind of shares the same characteristics and implementation of other acoustic sensors, but its operating frequency is quiet, quite low. But this sensor has actually been used for like biosensing applications uh, by using basically an antigen and antibody interaction to detect the bowel molecule on its surface. So if you can remember anything I just said, just remember piezoelectric effect. Because fundamentally, these devices kind of rely a lot on the piezoelectric effect. And if you guys want to know a little bit more about it, please check out chapter 6 of this book because it has tons and tons of information. Now, the other type of sensors are thermal sensors. Thermal, I'm sure you guys know, you guys have seen it, you guys know so, so much about it. But this includes thermocouples, thermal sisters, CMOS devices, which are complementary metal oxide semiconductor devices, bilayer cantilever, and IR imaging. So with thermocouple, a thermocouple, as you guys probably know, the composed of two metal in contact. And due to the thermoelectric effect, it kind of produces a voltage that is proportional to the change in temperature. Now, one of the important applications of the thermocouple sensors is when you're trying to do calorimetric sensing, where changes in temperature on absorption or desorption of analyte molecules are measured as a sensing effect. Now, a therm system is a type of resistor whose resistance changes significantly with the temperature and can be utilized as a thermal sensor. Pretty awesome, right? And a CMOS device is a device which is actually fabricated using silicone. And the carrier concentration of silicone is kind of highly dependent on the operation temperature, which can be found by measuring the voltage current characteristics. So the bilayer cantilever consists of two materials with different thermal expansion coefficients. And a change in the temperature kind of results in any mechanical changes on the cantilever for the measurements to be made. And last but not least, an IR image, as you guys know and probably heard about it, is that the infrared energy kind of emitted from the surface of the object directly kind of correlates to the temperature of the object itself. So that temperature can then be measured and the object can then be analyzed. Pretty awesome, right? So you guys are probably thinking, okay, well, all of these sensors, what are they used for? Well, thermal sisters have actually been used for medical procedures. And they have been used to kind of provide continuous body as well as tissue temperature and measurement in patients and can be used to monitor control of the temperature of a specific fluid. Now, they're used in like thermometers, skin sensors, blood analyzer, incubators, I mean, you name it. And another example actually been used in the care of premature babies, which is pretty awesome. Now, a CMOS temperature sensing system has actually been used in cell phones, portable AV equipment, palm tops, as well as even computers. And so a bilayer cantilever has different types of applications. And as you know, it is used to basically determine the temperature change in maybe a thermostat for climate control. And last but not least, IR thermography or IR imaging can be used in different applications such as night vision, civil engineering, and material testing as well. But these IR imaging has kind of like resurge in the biomedical applications and technology because it has been used in image processing, graphic cards, etc. So these are pretty cool sensors to check it out. So I'm sure you guys enjoyed this long videos about all these type of sensors. And I hope you guys learned a little bit more about it. If you guys want to have more information about this chapter, I will leave the link down below to the chapter so you can check it out. But until next time.